And welcome to another edition of Two Steps Ahead Podcast. Two Steps Ahead Podcast, encouraging you to take your passion, make it happen, and let yourself be great. I'm Saw Needham, and welcome to another edition of the show. And on the show, we're going to talk about something that we allude to often on the show. And we're going to bring in some examples of some stuff to try to back up what it is that we are talking about. And that is our mindset. And to start things off, have you been watching the Olympics? The fanfare of the uh, Tokyo Games, which is the Olympic fanfare. And so we hear it over and over and over again if you do watch the Olympics. But uh, I haven't really been watching too much. And not for the reasons that you might think. Mainly just because by the time the Olympics, the prime time television reaches us for, let's say, Tuesday. We already know the events and the outcomes of Wednesday because it's in Tokyo. And there's, I think, a 14 to 16 hour time difference, something like that, between the United States and Tokyo. And so, um, yeah, so by the time the prime time coverage comes on, we already know the events. For example, I was watching a uh, USA softball team. I like softball. I enjoy watching softball. It's a quick game. And a lot of times it comes down to one to nothing. So it's, you know, the littlest of mistakes can cost you a victory. So you have to execute the excellence of execution. Now, obviously, there's times in softball where it's a 16 nothing, 12 nothing, 6 nothing, you know, blowout because the team's just that much better. But usually in a lot of good competition between tough teams, it might be one nothing and the slightest of errors will cost you the victory. And so, uh, which I believe happened in the gold medal game, which Japan won when it came to uh, softball. They beat the U.S. U.S. had gone 5-0, and oh, and in the gold medal game, I think there was late in the game one little blunder by the U.S., and that cost them the gold medal. But I'm watching a game against, I think it was Australia, and I'm thinking, because I'm watching it kind of later in the evening where I'm at, and so you put that time change into consideration, and it's midday in Tokyo. So I think I'm watching the game live because in the upper right-hand corner, it says live. Well, as it turned out, it was a repeat, and I happened to check my phone for something else on the Olympics, and it showed the U.S. beat Australia, whatever it was, 2 nothing or whatever. And so I've been watching an old game, and they had already determined who was going to be in the gold medal match And so on and so forth. Anyways, but yeah, so I'm not watching the Olympics too much because of just I know the results by the time it gets TV. Now, I might go online or something and try to find alternative events. For example, I was watching surfing. Surfing is now an Olympic sport. The waves, as Spicoli might call them, were not very tasty. In fact, they were little ripples. So I'm not sure how successful that event was. Until the typhoon came, but I think the uh, surfing portion of the olympics was over by the time by the time the typhoon went through but anyways um so i was watching some of that that was kind of interesting and my favorite though now is three on three basketball have you seen it it's like non-stop action so if my team shoots and makes the basket the other team can just grab the ball they have to clear it out beyond the three-point line and then they can shoot or go back into play so it never really stops unless there's a foul you've got a 12 second shot clock And so people are putting up shots. Players are putting up shots pretty quickly. It's the first one to 21 or whoever has the lead at the end of 10 minutes. So it goes pretty quick. And it's just like playground ball. You're just out in the playground, the schoolyard, and you're just launching up shots, three-pointers, which I guess are actually two-pointers. And then your two-point shot is a one-point shot. But I was watching three-on-three basketball. That was pretty exciting and fun to watch. And you got to see uh, the difference between. and, And they're not the, you know, they're not the NBA or the WNBA players. You know, they're other players playing so it's more like my style you know my competition my level of skill I guess you can say so that's been kind of fun to watch but uh, one of the things I do like about the Olympics however is the underdog story or that story of greatness that comes out Hydaelyn Diaz won the Philippines first ever gold medal and she did it in weightlifting and this was her response after the match about winning the gold medal. Woo! 
please um, join with me the NBA. Pangay sa sports, weightlifting na kaya natin mga Pilipino. First time natin ito. Akala natin imposible. Akala ko din imposible itong pandemic. Nasa pandemic tayo, oh, imposible ang Olympics. Pero nandito tayo ngayon. So, kaya natin. Huwag kayong sumuko. Kahit anong challenges and trials yan, manalangin tayo kay God. Magbagayit siya sa atin. Now, I'm not exactly sure what she was saying in there, but you can pick up a few things. But the the poignant part is the cheering, the whooping. They're excited. She pulls off the first ever gold medal for the Philippines, upsetting China in the gold medal lift. And you can hear the excitement. You can hear the enthusiasm about her win, that this is what it was all about, that Olympic spirit. And it was interesting because then I did some research into who she was, and it turns out that her training regimen wasn't typically what you would think of. She was using the old, I believe it was Rocky Three when he fights Ivan Drago of Russia, and there's that scene in there where he's in the gym. I mean, uh, Ivan Drago's in the gym using all this technology to get bigger, stronger, faster to try to win the boxing match, and Rocky is using the farmhouse and everything that comes with the farmhouse, kind of the old school, natural way. Well, she has like a broom handle with water jugs on it, and she's using that as part of her training routine, and she's finding whatever she can. Obviously, there's some times where she is actually using weights, but she's using whatever she can. She had that determination. She had that drive. She had that mindset to bring out her inner greatness and take it to the Olympics, to Tokyo, and win the gold medal. And that's what's inspiring is when you see people like that, People that are just, you know, to the world, probably nobody's. Maybe she's just a mom. Maybe she's just a a wife. Maybe she's just a daughter, a friend. But here she goes to Tokyo. Now, I believe she did win a silver medal in Rio in 2016. So she has had some success. But come on, first gold medal for a country? She's going to be a national hero. That's pretty exciting. And so then you start to see other athletes there was an athlete from bermuda female athlete who won the country's first gold medal she won it in the triathlon i believe the typhoon was even going on at the time or remnants of it and so she was excited and she was talking about her victory and what it meant and and i think a couple days after she was still being interviewed and it hadn't quite sunk in just the enormity of bringing home a country's first ever gold medal And you see these stories and you hear about these athletes that are out there and they don't really have anything else to to strive for. There's not really endorsements that they're going after. They're not distracted by all this other stuff because it's not available to them. They don't have the media. They don't have the advertising. They don't have the brands. They don't have all these other monetary entities coming at them. All they have is the competition. Which, by the way, I think we should go back to. We should go back to having, who wants to see NBA players? Maybe you do, but who wants to see NBA players in the Olympics? I mean, they lost to France. Team USA lost to France in the first game. Then they slaughtered Iran in the second game, like 116 to 64, some nonsense. I mean, what kind of competition is that? Let's bring back the amateur athlete. And let's bring back that competition of Olympic spirit where all you're doing is you're competing for the gold. And the excitement that comes with it, you're like happy that you actually won. You've got people winning the gold medal and they're like, eh, I've got an NBA world championship, man. I'm going to argue on Twitter with my teammate about I made a basket and so I need the ball back so I can shoot again. I mean, who needs that? You know, and they're talking about the Olympic ratings have dropped because of the so-called wokeness. Or now they're saying it's because, you know, athletes aren't, the Team USA isn't doing very well. And that's fine, whatever reason. Like I said, I don't really watch a whole lot of it because I already know the results by the time I sit down to watch it. But there are some of those off sports, some of those other countries, like table tennis or badminton. Have you ever seen table tennis or badminton? Those are entertaining sports to watch, especially when you have these athletes that are so talented and able to, hit the shuttlecock or the ping pong ball, the table tennis ball. It's pretty exciting to watch. You know, and swimming, I guess swimming is going on, and you've got some, uh, I think there was a 17-year-old from Alaska that won her first gold medal, and I think Seward, Alaska went nuts. They had a camera on the crowd watching, and they all went absolutely berserk. 
And that type of thing is fun and exciting to watch, that Olympic spirit, because, again, these athletes are out there training. These athletes are out there trying to give it their all. They put in the time. They put in the work. They've raised the standard. They've tried to bring out their inner greatness. They're ready to compete. Their mindset is there. They get into that competition, that athletic competition, and they succeed. And it's exciting, especially for you know first-time winners and people that this is all they have. But their mindset is there. And so Hydlin Diaz from the Philippines, excited, whooping, and people around her whooping it up at that press conference after she won the gold medal. You know, that's pretty exciting. Do you think these people had plan B in mind? Or do you think plan A was it? Do you think they're out there striving for silver? Do you think they're out there striving for bronze? No, they're out there striving for that gold medal. That's why it's difficult sometimes for athletes when they finish second. Or they finished third. I was watching the uh, triathlon with the Bermuda, uh, the, the women's triathlon when the Bermuda athlete won. I think her name was Duffy. Anyways, um, she, uh, the, the fourth place. I could, could you imagine coming in fourth place in the triathlon at the Olympics? I mean, that's a great feat, but you get nothing. No medal, and you just missed out on the podium, and you put all that work in. Could you imagine how devastating that might be? But the mindset out there is to win. And so when we have that mindset, we have an image of ourselves. We have a plan A. We're going to go after that plan A. And that's all we're going to do. You and I have an image of ourselves. It's how we see ourselves. I know there's a reflection come back from the mirror. I can see me. That's a reflection of my physical being. But that's not how I see me. I see me in my mind. And it's based on information that I have on me. Some people have a lot of false information, so they've got a very false self-image. Anything that you're going to do is dependent on how you see you. If you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of, they get stronger. And you don't know what the upper limits to that are, because you might ask yourself, like, If for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, what would you be like? There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Did you hear that? Having a plan B only distracts from plan A? And then he who says he can... And he who says he can't are both usually right. So are you someone that says you can? Or are you someone that says, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do this. I was watching uh, the movie Speed the other night. Hadn't seen it in a while. Seen it a billion times. But I hadn't seen it in a while. And in the opening scene with the elevator, the elevator starts to fall and then it gets stopped. And Keanu Reeves is there trying to pull people out of the elevator and that one lady is in the back corner and Keanu's like, Hey, take my hand, take a step and take my hand and I'll pull you to safety. And she's like, I can't, I can't. And because she, her mindset is I can't, she's about to perish. The elevator's about to drop. She's going to die because she can't do it. She has that fear in her, which is understandable. But then somehow, because it's Hollywood, it's a movie and we have to have a happy ending. Her mindset changes. I can. And she takes that step, reaches out, grabs the hand, and is pulled to safety just in time as the elevator comes crashing to the ground. Imagine that. But it's the I can mentality. People who say they can't, won't. People who say they can, will. You will try. You will have that plan A, and you will go after that gold medal. You're not going to settle for silver. You're not settling for second place. It might happen competition there's a lot of variables that go with competition if we only looked at paper the whole thing is like you've got to play the game you can't just you know play it on paper if you play it on paper this team will always win and then you have march madness which is just full of upsets and the cinderella story you got to go play the game so a lot of variables take place but you're out there to win you're out there your plan a is to win be a champion And you have the mindset of a champion. So you're going out there, you're practicing, you're doing everything you can to have that mentality. 
I was taking a training course not too long ago. And the very first thing they talked about was our mindset. You have to have the right mindset. Whatever you do, if you're in business, you have to have the right mindset for your business. You have to have the right mindset if you're an athlete. You have to have the right mindset if you're a musician. You can be talented enough to play the guitar, or you can be talented enough to run a corporation. But if you have the wrong mindset, you're going to fail. If you have the right mindset along with the skills and the practice, the practice, the practice, the getting better, you will succeed. I was listening to a clip. It didn't make our cut for the show. It was the next clip that if I would have had one. And it was uh, talking about how you can't give up because you got to go out there and practice and get better because you've got to outwork the other person. That other person is out there outworking you. If that other person is out there outworking you, they're going to outperform you. If you're out there outworking the other person and you're committed and dedicated to that, then you will outperform them because you have that mindset. My, our mind is right. Now, I want to replay that uh, the first part of the clip again because there's some meat in there that I want you to hear about who we think we are. So if our mindset is a big deal, what's our perception of that mindset? What's our perception of us? So if I think I can't do it, why is that? Why can't I do it? Well, listen again to this first part of the clip. What happened in 86? I go. You and I have an image of ourselves. It's how we see ourselves. I know there's a reflection come back from the mirror. I can see me. That's a reflection of my physical being. But that's not how I see me. I see me in my mind. And it's based on information that I have on me. Some people have a lot of false information, so they've got a very false self-image. What type of information do you have on yourself when you're looking in the mirror? Remember, the mirror is just a reflection. It's not the true you. We can put a costume on and look in the mirror. Or women, you look in the mirror to her makeup on. Maybe actors, guys, you do it too, whatever. But you're looking in the mirror and you see yourself a certain way. Is that the right perspective? Are you giving yourself the right information? If someone said to you, X, Y, Z, are you going to believe it? Is that false information being told to you? Were you told you can't? So therefore you believe you can't? Is that misinformation? Is that false information? And you really can? So your mindset goes to this idea that I can't because that's the image that I see in me because I was told that by somebody else? Or do you hear the I can't and you get motivated? Give you a little secret. When I hear I can't, I'm more motivated to do I can. Someone says, you can't do that. Want to see me? You can't do that. Want to bet? Now, of course, in the natural world, if someone said you can't lift a thousand pounds, okay, come on. Hydland Diaz could probably outlift me. So I'm being realistic. But if they came to you and said, you can't do whatever it is that you want to do, how many times have you given up on a dream because someone said, you can't achieve that? That's that's out there. That's out of the box thinking. You're nuts. You can't do that. Well, what about, let's bring it home a little bit closer to home. Weight images of ourselves. We look at ourselves and we see ourselves overweight. I was talking to a student one time because I used to teach. And um, there was a student that was a singer. She wanted to sing. And so she was singing a little bit for us and very good. She was like 19, maybe 20. And so I asked her a question. I said, what do you think is going to keep you from chasing your dreams, achieving your dreams? And so she started talking about some things. And one of the things that was a curiosity on my part was the fact that she brought up her looks. Now, I understand there are certain professions that require looks. Take, for example, news anchors. News anchors have a certain look. And when that certain look goes away, whether age or whatever, they disappear. That's just a fact. Right or wrong, you can debate that. It's just a fact. But singers, I guess, I guess performers, maybe that's the case. I don't know. But the voice should be the first thing, right? Anyways, 
So I'm talking to this student who can sing, obviously has the voice. She's going to school to do music, to sing. And as she's talking about her look, she starts talking about the bridge of her nose. It's off. And then something over here by her ear. And I'm looking at her and I'm like thinking to myself, okay, are you out of your mind? Because I don't see what you see. I'm not, I'm not seeing the, the, the bridge of your nose being off center. And so, you know, I listen and I said, oh, that's interesting. Cause I don't, I don't notice it. it looks fine to me. It looks normal. You look great, you know, but she was kind of fixated on this and somewhere along the way she had gotten this information, whether through herself or somebody else that kind of the bridge of her nose made her look kind of funny. And so that's how she saw herself. And so she saw that limitation that to me was mythical, but in her it was real. But she saw that as a limitation to achieving her goals. And so the misinformation was leading her and her mindset to maybe I can't do this because the bridge of my nose is looking funky. And so we have to be careful about the reflections that we see in our own selves and to make sure that the information that we are receiving Now, sometimes that could be good coming out of a pandemic, lockdown, we all drink some adult beverages and we don't exercise because the gyms are down. And some of us, we can't go outside because we'll get arrested if we go outside because that's what city officials want. And so we're stuck binge watching, eating bonbons on the couch in our spots. And so we gain the COVID-19. So we look in the mirror and like, man, I chunked up. Okay. What are we going to do about it? Well, I'm going to lose it. I can lose this weight, and I'm going to lose this weight. A real representation. Not the, oh, I gained weight, and now I'm just fat and ugly, and that's the end of it. No. We have information that we receive, or we see somebody. Hey, are you okay? I remember a guy that I knew, a friend of mine. He was looking kind of sickly. He had lost a bunch of weight, and he was looking not very good. So I asked him, I said, you okay? Something wrong? And he wasn't feeling the greatest. And so I said, why don't you go to the doctor and get checked out? Well, if I go, I get bad news. Well, duh, because obviously there's something wrong with you. Take that information and then work with it in a realistic way. You look sickly. Oh, yeah, I know I am sickly. I look sickly. Go get it checked out. You look, I look fat. No, you don't. Well, who's telling you that? See, the information that we get in there is going to give us a reflection of who we are when we look in the mirror. I can't do something because they said I can't. Really? Is that what we're going to do? Are we going to sit there and say we can't compete at an Olympic level because someone told us we can't, because we can't tell us ourselves what we can and can't do? Does plan B distract our plan a i know a lot of people i know a lot of people that never had a plan a i mean i'm sorry a plan b they were always on plan a some people had plan b i know i kind of had a plan b i kind of had a plan b minus because i was confident in my skills and abilities but sometimes there's those outside tangible things that we can't control and so yeah for example a lockdown for example Back in 2009, the economy tanked. A lot of people in the media and entertainment world lost jobs. So yeah, it's good sometimes to have something to fall back onto just in case. I was at radio stations. They sold off. Everyone gets the boot because they're bringing in another format, another language. I know a lot of people that would lose their job when uh, Spanish language radio was really starting to up and come back in the the mid-90s, maybe, something like that, across the country. And formats were being flipped to accommodate Spanish-speaking people, listeners. If you didn't speak Spanish, didn't have a show. So again, we have to be able to be reasonable in the expectations of life that we have, okay? But again, are we having a plan B, or are we going straight after plan A? You know, Lou Holtz, which you kind of heard a little bit because I hit two buttons, at the same time, which is no bueno. But uh, Lou Holtz, he went to the University of Notre Dame to coach. I believe it was in the mid-'80s. He talks about it. Now, if you're familiar with Notre Dame football, 
Notre Dame football, when they leave the locker room to take the field, there's a sign on the way out that says, play like a champion today. And every Notre Dame football player and probably the coaching staff and everybody on the team will slap that sign on their way out. Play like a champion, play like a champion. And it's become tradition. This is the genesis of that. And if you play, pay close attention, you'll really kind of see what that represents. It goes beyond just symbolism. What happened in 86, I go to Notre Dame, and I want to learn everything I can about the history of Notre Dame football. So I go to the library. I check out all the books I can on Notre Dame football. I'm in the motel, which I stay in until my family moved down, and I go through the book, and somewhere there's a picture in the book of the entranceway into the stadium, down the step, and there's a sign, play like a champion today. So I started to ask around, what, what happened to that sign? Who put, nobody could tell me, nobody knew anything about it. And so I said, okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to get this made up. And we're going to put the same exact place it was that I saw on the picture. And so we had to print it up. And then I say to the players every year, we're never going to go on that field without hitting that sign. But more importantly than hitting that sign, this is what it represents. Number one, think of all the people that have helped you get here to Notre Dame. Your family, your parents, your high school coach. The other thing I want you to realize, all the great athletes have been here before you. So all the great athletes that came before you to build Notre Dame football, remember that as you slap the sign and you go out to the field. All the people that helped you. All the people that helped you get to where you are today. Remember them as you go out there. And then remember the tradition that comes with being a Notre Dame football player. So there was symbolism and there was purpose in what Lou Holtz did by putting that sign up there. Not only was he taking tradition and utilizing old tradition to create new tradition or basically rebirth that tradition, but he created something there as a reminder to the athletes. This is your plan A. This is your mindset. Play like a champion today. And playing like a champion doesn't only mean having the mindset of winning. Having the mindset to remember the people that helped you get here. Have the mindset to remember the people that had come before you to create the school, to create the program, to create the greatness, the tradition, and everything else that comes along with fighting Irish football. Think of all those things as you go out there because then your mindset goes beyond just the playing field. The mindset then becomes, I'm re representing a football team. I'm representing a community. And he goes on there in that clip, and he goes on to say that, you know, you don't want to let your, your teammates down. When you slap that sign, you don't want to let your teammates down. You want to play so that and compete so that your teammates can rely on you, and together as a team, you can become successful. And that's the important thing to remember as we have this championship mindset or, or what our mindset is. Sometimes our mindset might be on us. Sometimes our mindset might be team. We look at the information. We talked about the information we receive ourselves. But what about the information we receive about our team? What about the information we receive about our business? What about the information we receive from others about our families and the way we look at it? Do we then judge our families? Do we judge our businesses? Do we judge our team based on misinformation? Or do we have a true sense? I was listening to a, a clip of Kobe Bryant one time, and he was talking about how for him to be successful, he had to take a look at some of the things that would could be considered weaknesses and either turn them into strengths or turn them into weapons that he could use against his, his uh, uh, opponent. And one of the things was his palm, the palm of his hand. He said he did not have enormously large hands, so he had to strengthen his palm so he can palm the ball. He wasn't the quickest, so he had to work on angles and cutting angles and footwork. His jump shot, when he first got into the NBA, if, if this jump shot was falling short, he had to work on leg strength. So he found his weaknesses, and he created strengths from them. He worked on them. So he didn't say, oh, my palms are too small, so I can't play basketball. Oh, my jump shot keeps falling short. I can't play basketball. Oh, I'm going to have plan B and go someplace else. Plan B never entered his Mamba mentality. 
I got to strengthen my hands so I can palm the ball. So I'm out there on the court, can palm the ball. I can cut my angles sharper and lose my defender quicker by cutting these angles. I'm going to work on my leg strength so my jump shot gets there. And that's what we have to do. We have to take the information and not have false information or misinformation dictate us and think us into a mindset of I can't. But we got to take that and be like, okay, here are my strengths. Here's what I need to work on. Let's not call them weaknesses, things I need to improve and work on. We can get better. How can we get better? Let's do this and come up with a plan, formulate a plan. So just like Lou Holtz there, talking about bringing back tradition, maybe we need to set some tradition for ourselves. Maybe we need to set up some things that we can do or a thing that we can do as we head out the door to start the day. Slap the door. Whatever your slogan might be. Best teacher. I'm going to be the best teacher today. I'm going to be the best athlete. I'm going to be the kindest person. I'm going to work on my patience while I'm on the freeway. I'm going to work on being polite to others. Whatever it might be, whatever it is that you want to work on, I'm going to work on my self-image. Maybe you have a picture of yourself up on the wall before, uh, above the door jam, and you slap that on your way out, knowing that you're connecting with yourself, saying, I'm going to have a positive self-image of myself. I'm going to have a positive reflection of who I truly am. And I'm not going to let these other people out there give me false information or misinformation. Because a lot of times we can get suckered into that. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard over the course of my life, it's kind of sad, where I've heard people give up because somebody, whether it be a parent, whether it be some other family, adult, relative, an aunt, an uncle, whatever, maybe friends, they said, You can't do this. And they bought into it. They bought into it and they gave up. They gave up their dream. They gave up who they wanted to be. They settled. And with that goes happiness, contentment. Life becomes harder to live. Have you ever been in a job that sucks? You dread getting up in the morning? I've been there. I'm not there now. Why? I didn't want to stay there. I had places to go, things to do, stuff to achieve. Peace out. I'm going, moving forward, plan A in full motion. My mindset is I'm not selling for this. I'm moving forward. This might be temporary, what I'm sitting in. Okay, here's an example. When I left uh, Scott's Bluff, Nebraska doing radio, I wanted to come back to L.A., And I wanted to give a shot at LA radio. So I just up and left and came out here. And I started knocking on doors, looking for a job, found a part-time job at the sports station. And so uh, obviously it wasn't enough to pay the bills. So I had to get another job. And that job turned out to be a security job. And uh, it wasn't very fun. It was overnights and it pretty much blew. But my mindset was I'm not being content and staying here. I'm, this is temporary. This is what I need to do right now. My plan A is still the radio. I've got my foot in that door. I'm doing my thing. I'm working hard there. When the opportunity opens up, I'm bolting the security going there. And then eventually I got the job. Full-time opened up and I was able to move into full-time. Well, while working security, there was a guy that came on board. I was kind of the supervisor and I was listening to him and he was telling me his story and this is what he did. And I guess it's fine for him, but I just didn't understand the simplicity of his mentality. It was a, uh, he was working 10, uh, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. was his shift. He would uh, show up to work. I guess he took the bus, and I guess it was maybe an hour or two on the bus, and he would show up to work, get to about 10.30, a half hour ahead of time, so maybe he left about 8.30 his house. He was only making like nine bucks an hour. He would work the overnight, leave at 7, catch the bus, maybe 7.30, get home in time for uh the price is right at 10 o'clock in LA. And that was his thing. He'd get off. He'd watch the price is right. He'd eat his breakfast. And then about noon, he'd go to sleep, get up at eight. And that was all he wanted to do. And he was living and renting a room from an elderly lady, just one room, bedroom. And that was it. That's all he wanted to do was watch his wheel of fortune or his uh, price is right. Eat his breakfast and the rest just show up so he can make 
enough money to pay his rent and watch his uh, prices right. Now, to me, that blew my mind because he had an opportunity to advance to like a supervisor position. He turned it down. No, because it's going to uh, it's going to upset my routine. Okay, I, I, I guess that's fine. But that just blew my mind to have that simplistic. You're just settling. You have nothing. Because he was too scared to get outside that. He finally said, you know what? If I take this uh, supervisor gig, I might mess up. And if I mess up, then I might lose my job. If I lose my job, then my whole world you know, falls apart. So risk-taking or taking a chance wasn't in his vocabulary. And that's fine if that's who you are and you're comfortable with that. And that's okay. I'm not going to judge. But it's like, don't you want more out of life? Don't you want something else besides that? Because, you know, we don't think of it, but our mind is actually truly a weapon. Your mind is a weapon, and you got to begin to use it and pick that weapon up and control it. Most people are out of control with their mind. They don't point it at something. They let the world point it, and they misfire all the time. I want you to pick up that weapon that is your mind and begin to point it at the things you want, knowing that it's a magnet that draws to you the things in your life that you would most like to have. The most successful people I know are the most self-aware, meaning they're aware of what they do and they're also aware of what they think, they're aware of how they're perceived. Do you ever think about what you think about? Because if you did, and if you took control of that, you could alter the direction of your entire life. Most people never take the time to take an inventory about their thoughts, yet our thoughts control our world. Our thoughts are like magnets. They literally draw towards us that which we obsess about. And so most people never take the time to analyze what they think about. Average person, you and I, have about 75,000 thoughts a day rattling around in this thing we call our brains. The crazy thing is 91% of those thoughts are identical to the previous day and are identical to the day before that and the day before that and the day before that. And then we wonder why our life seems to repeat itself over and over again. So really the difference in our life, if we have 75,000 thoughts a day, here's the crazy thing, 91% of them are exactly the same. The separation in our life is in those 9% of their thoughts. That's why people say all the time, the difference between winning and losing is so small, it's almost too scary to talk about. And really, we've identified what it is. It's 9% of what we think about alters the direction of our life. 9% of what we think about alters the direction of our lives. What's on your mind? You know, the commercial, what's in your wallet? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about in that 9%? You could do the math, but... What, 75,000 and 10% is what, 7,500 maybe? So in those 7,500 unique thoughts per day, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? Who's controlling your mind? Did you ever think of your mind as a weapon? It's a weapon that can be used for whatever. And maybe a, maybe a tool. Maybe, maybe weapon is too offensive because we're in such a, uh, you know, Woke society, guns are bad and things are bad. So we have to use our language a certain way. So maybe a tool. Your, your mind's a tool, but it's actually a weapon. The mindset. If you're controlling your mind and you're controlling those 9% thoughts, what type of information is contained in that 9%? What type of information are you then judging your life on? Is the world controlling it? I've seen a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people, seen it on social media, where the world is controlling 100% of their mind. Just look around. You look around and see it. Look on social media. Look on Twitter. Look at your friends uh, on social media. Look what they're just repeating. Look at what they're just spewing out there. Stuff they don't even think about. Stuff that doesn't even make sense. I saw a story headline, actually a story on uh, one of the websites. I don't know, the news websites. The first story was uh, the vaccinated blame the unvaccinated for spikes in the Delta variant. So the unvaccinated people, they're the ones that are the bad guys. The very next story, mass uh, border patrol watches as mass immigrants flood the country, maskless. So a bunch of people are coming in from another country. Not vaccinated not wearing masks, and who knows where they end up. The point isn't political, but the point is logic. How can you say that story A is the problem and story B is no big deal? There's nothing to see here. 
So you can't do that. And people just repeat that over. They don't stop to think for a minute for themselves what is actually going on here. And then let's take that even further to our social circles, gossiping. How many times have we learned that gossiping, which is usually false information, lies, mistruths, coming from some bad place in the heart? We're talking about somebody in a bad way, and then people start to spread that gossip. Why? Your mind is being controlled by the world. Control your mind. Take control of that weapon. Take control of your thoughts. Be mindful of what you're thinking about. Garbage in, garbage out. We've talked about it before. What's on your heart is going to come out. And usually what's on your heart is what you're thinking about. Your mindset and your heart go hand in hand. So if your heart is full of evil, your mind is probably thinking of some not good things. If your mind is thinking of good things, your heart is going to be a lot softer. And it's going to come out. Do you have self-awareness? Not like, oh, who I am, I'm going to go and join a combine and a commune and just be peace, love. No, but are you self-aware of what's going on? Hey, I'm in a bad environment. I need to get out of this thing. The people around me are giving me a lot of false information. I need to leave. I need to go find new friends. I need to find something different. Or are we just going along? So what's on your mind? For the 9%, are you creating something, a plan to make it better for you? Are you creating your plan A? It doesn't matter where you are in life right now. You can always go back to plan A. If you're on plan Z, you can readjust your life if you want and go back to plan A. The I can, the I can. Because if you think I can, if you think I can't, you're probably right. Which category would you like to be in? New parents are always fascinating to observe because they're freaking out about everything. And especially young mothers, I can't do this. Well, maybe you should have thought about that 10 months ago, nine months ago on that night. But anyways, um, yes, you can. We look at kids and we see a protege, a piano protege from Japan or China or some other country or maybe even here, and they're doing their thing on the piano or their musical instrument. And we're like, wow, we're impressed. In America, we get so impressed by four-year-olds playing the piano. Why? They can. We put limits on what our kids can do. We can't have swings in the playground. They might get hurt. But if we wear bike helmets... We have to protect them and coddle them. We have to give everybody a trophy. Every kid gets a trophy. You go 0 and 10, you get a trophy. We're not going to keep score because it might offend somebody. We put caps and limits and give false information and mislead our kids and the next generation with all kinds of misinformation because you know what? That's what we've decided to do. And then what happens? It becomes problematic. People start to realize there's a whole different world out there. And they have that misinformation. So what are you doing with your 9%? What are you doing with the I can or the I can't mindset? Do you want to change it from I can't to I can? Well, you can if you want to. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win but think you can't, it's almost a cinch you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out in the world we find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of the mind. If you are outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win the prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, The man who wins is the man who thinks he can. It comes down to how you think. I have to take a test. I'm not going to pass. Well, you're probably not. I have a meeting. You're probably going to fail the meeting. Well, you probably are. Society gives you a box, and they want you to live in this box. There is a great big world outside that box. Don't be boxed in. Don't live in a box. Live outside the box. Think outside the box. 
because there's a whole big world out there that you can do. Maybe you can't do it in this particular thing that you're in. Like I said, I can't lift weights over my head to win a gold medal. So I have expectations and realistic expectations on what I can and can't do. Can I get a degree? Well, I don't think you can. Why? Why are you letting somebody say you can't go back to school and get a degree? Sure you can. I know a couple people. They grew up and their their fathers didn't want them to go to school and did everything they can to keep them home so they can work in the house for the family. And then years later, as an adult, they decided to go back to school, accomplish things, plan A. They got back to plan A and went to school. So you can. You can go back to that if you want to. Now maybe life circumstances fed you lemons and lemonade really isn't realistic. So maybe you have to alter things. I get that. There is no written rule in life. Someone says, oh man, I wish life, I wish I had a normal life. Well, what's normal? What's life? Now that's not getting philosophical and being like, ooh, let's figure this out. No, but what is normal? You look at people all around, go to the mall and just walk and look at all the people at the mall and you're like, man, normal lives, out here shopping, they're buying stuff. How do we know they're not addicted to shopping? Their credit card bills are out of control. How do we know there's not other issues going on? They have relationship problems or they've got other stuff going on. We don't know that. All we can do is take control of who we are right now and start with our mindset. Change our mindset because when we change our mindset, we change ourselves. If we have a champion's mentality, we change ourselves. And then as we change ourselves, we bring out the inner greatness. We raise the standard. Other people will see that. Oh, they went back to school at 40, 50, 60. Oh, they were able to overcome huge debt. They were able to overcome homelessness. They were able to overcome whatever it is. The Paralympics are going to be taking place here shortly after the original Olympics or the whatever you want to call them. And um, how many people in the Paralympics were told they can't do something now because they did not have the ability to? That's a whole two weeks, which I wish that NBC would put those on TV. Talk about inspirational television. People losing limbs, people with disabilities, people who can't see, whatever the case may be, they're out there running, they're out there jumping, they're out there swimming, they're out there competing, they're in wheelchairs doing stuff. They're living life. Maybe we should take a page from them and maybe we're the ones that have the disability because our mind is disabled. Our mind doesn't allow us to achieve fully what it is we want to achieve. Maybe they're the ones that got it going on. Maybe their physical limitations we see as something that is negative, and I'm, you, sh- you know that they would want to be able body. There's no doubt about that. But they don't let their limitations stop them. They endure. So maybe we should, instead of putting on these woke athletes and people that, you know, they're just there for whatever reason, maybe we should put on the Paralympics in prime time so we can see the inspirational stories of people. Or maybe put on more stories or more events like uh, Heidland Diaz. So we can see inspirational stories of everyday people overcoming all kinds of things to have that success because their mindset is right. Most people live the way they think other people think they should live. At the very best, that's got to be a bad trip. This is your life. Make it a phenomenal experience. Greatness is not this wonderful, esoteric, elusive, godlike feature that only the special among us will ever taste you know it's something that truly exists in all of us it's your life make it phenomenal don't settle do great things greatness is in you bring it out go after whatever it is start your business start your podcast start your music career pick up an instrument learn a language Whatever it is you want to do, you can do it if you set your mind to it. If you have the right mindset, you can do it. We talked a few podcasts ago about Phil Mickelson being 50 and winning a PGA golf event. It took him maybe more effort 
because as he's older, maybe he can't compete physically with 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, but he went out there. He worked harder. He never gave up. He worked on his mental game. He did all the things he needed to do to become the oldest player to win a PGA event. He did not let age get in his way. He had plan A. I'm going to win. I'm going to go out and do it. And he did. Hydland Diaz, I'm going to get a gold medal. I'm going to do whatever I have to. I'm going to get water jugs. I'm going to get a broom handle. I'm going to do whatever I can to go out there and get myself in the best possible shape, best possible situation to win a gold medal. And she did it. First gold medal ever. What's keeping you from you achieving whatever it is you want to achieve? Your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. It could be simple things like learning a language, learning an instrument. It could be great things like starting a business, inspiring others, getting an education. You figure out whatever it is that you want, make it your plan A and go after it with the mindset of I can. Because if you say I can, and if you say I can't, you're probably right. If the lion is the king of the jungle, how can he be the king of the jungle? If he's not the biggest, the elephant is probably one of the biggest. He can't be the fastest because that's the cheat. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does the lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. When a lion walks up and sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. An elephant thinks run. Because when a male lion walks up, he may be outnumbered by a pack of hyenas. But I'm king of my jungle because of my mentality. The mind is a weapon. Are you going to use it for your benefit? The mind is a tool. Are you going to use it to your benefit? Or are you going to let it? Just go to waste. I think it was the uh, United Negro College Fund. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. A lot of truth in that. Why waste your mind? Why waste that 9%? That is original thought every day. Why not try to increase that original thought from 9% to maybe 10 or 11? Give yourself a little bit of an advantage over the rest of us. We're all settling at 9%. Maybe instead of watching hours and hours of TikTok videos or social media, maybe we read a book, learn something new. Maybe we hear a speech from somebody that inspires us. I don't know. You can decide for yourself what it is that you want to do. But then go do it. Don't think or don't let I can't stop you. All I can't is an apostrophe T. The apostrophe T is the only thing keeping you from doing what you want to do. Eliminate the apostrophe T. I can. That's all it is. It's up to you. You can do it if you want to. You might need to build a support system. You might need to get some help. That's your team. Build that team. Give yourself that foundation of success and you can go out and you can take your passion you can make it happen and you can let yourself be great this is two steps ahead podcast like to thank you for being with us here on this episode a couple of things to uh, remind you about or let you know about is uh, our new website is up and blazing radiowarp.com that's radio and then w-a-r-p radiowarp.com you go there and you can watch videos of the podcast you can listen to episodes of the podcast um, there's, uh, other programming that is there on the website. You can go to radiowarp.com and you can click, uh, Pandora, Spotify, you know, all the different uh, podcast places where you can listen to the show and take us with you on the go. You can do it from your, you know, your smartphone. Um, you can go to the listen live and click listen live in the upper right hand corner or on the bottom of your screen. If you're on a phone and, uh, We've got 24-7 live music and other uh, things, podcasts and stuff on there. Uh, we've got a world chart show. We've got 80s music. We've got the latest uh, releases in pop music. So a lot of cool stuff going on in RadioWarp.com. There's also a swag shop. If you click the swag shop, you can uh, go to the merch store and get some cool merchandise, especially now that it's summer. 
enjoying the heat wave. And so there's a lot of cool things there. So it's basically one-stop shopping for Two Steps Ed podcast, for um, great music. If you're an 80s fan, great place for 80s music. If you're a pop music fan, a great place for that. So um, a lot of cool things. And do me a favor, check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, You can follow us on Instagram as well. Uh, Instagram is uh, TWO, Two Steps Ahead Podcast. And then also the Radio Warp link is in the bio. And then my personal page, which is Edom Rocks, E-I-D-E-M-R-O-C-K-S, Edom Rocks. And again, I've got some photos and posts and stuff that are just uh, about me out and about doing my thing. If you want to see more about me and who I am, you can follow me on Instagram at Edom Rocks and uh, check me out. But um, but check out RadioWarp.com. It's everything there. Also, we have a phone app if you go to your app store whether it be Apple or Android, and just search Radio Warp app. That's radio, then W-A-R-P, app, A-P-P, Radio Warp app. It'll come up, just download it. You can take us with you on the go, wherever you want. And again, it's, uh, it's actually really cool. So do me a favor, check it out. Let me know what you think. And also, if you wouldn't mind telling a friend, letting other people know, that's the best way for uh, the message to get out there is to uh, have people like yourself share the message. And we would greatly appreciate that. You can hear the show live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on RadioWarp.com. And then we release the shows later in the week. And again, RadioWarp.com, you'll find them all there. The new videos, the new shows, everything right there. So, uh, again, we appreciate you listening. Thank you for your support. We truly appreciate it. And without you, we could not do this uh, show. So, again, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for uh, supporting us. Again, Two Steps Ahead podcast, encouraging you to take your passion, make it happen, let yourself be great. Say, I can, and you will, and we'll see you next time here on Two Steps Ahead podcast.